Welcome to Tracing Your Family Roots. My name is Arlene Sachs, and this is Sally Ann Sachs, and we're on an absolute high from a terrific uh, week that we had in, in a town called Bad Erlsen uh, last week. Germany. In, in Germany, uh, where we did some research. We've got another show on the research side of it, and today uh, th on this show we want to talk a little bit about some of the other experiences we had in the town, because I think they were feel meaningful to us. They certainly were to me. Um, Bad Erlsen was the stronghold of the SS. The SS school was there. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that when we talk about the man who took us around. Uh, so there is the International Tracing Service with all those records on, the, on the, all of these people that are supposed to be dead. And um, so it was it, it, you know, very exciting and difficult. And emotional. Uh, one, I think what we should say is that we visited three I call them dwarfs, villages. Yes, they're very uh, Maybe Bad Arrelson is the biggest. It now has 18,000 people, we were told. Yeah, that, that, that was the big one. Right. And, Definitely and the big one. The International Tracing Service in, arranged a couple of tours for us, and one was with a man who is... Well, let, you're jumping ahead. Let's okay. take a look at, at Bad Arrelson itself first. This was the path that we took uh, to and the, from the... Uh, that's the Gross Allee, the Grand Allee, or is it the Gross Allee? Gross Allee. Gross means large. Big, it's like uh, a boulevard. It's a boulevard. The street, the cars are over on the side, and a huge area for us to walk. Beautiful trees. Everything was blooming. Beautiful sunny days. Um, this is we, we, our hotel was three blocks away from the research center. The, the town was sort of started by this uh, uh, Duke, Duke of Waldeck, and this was his palace. Um, his, he, he uh, laid out the town, or he had a mathematician laid out the town um, with perpendicular streets and parallel streets, and well, you don't find that anywhere. Two streets. Remember, the, it started at the, at the palace and went down straight down with the houses. I love this story. Oh, I, yes. I, I'll, I'll you know, show you. have to show that. Yeah. They, um, and at the end of that. There's the, there, there are the houses. One has three windows. The next w house has five windows. By order. And by the order. next house has three windows, and the next house has five windows. So it was... Uh, <laughs> very, very orderly. Very orderly. Uh, and then at the corner, on the intersecting corners, were the churches. Were the churches. Uh, now, this is uh, Dr. Dieter Zimmer, right, and actually he did say that his father was an SS officer. Officer, uh, he only saw him as an, uh, for one hour. Well, I guess when he was an infant, and then he was killed uh, when he was sent wherever. Uh, and he got interested in the history of the area and started researching. So much of what we learned from of the Jews of, of Bad Elson, we learned from him. Um, this was the house where the very first Jew had lived. He had come at, at the invitation of the Duke of Waldeck. That, by the way, was not uncommon in Germany. Remember, it said, he, Zimmer said the Duke had financial problems. So they, he invited this Jew to come, and in order for Jews to live anywhere in Germany, they had to get these tolerance patents yes. for which they paid money. And they, he, he also was expected to start an economic well, uh, he, commerce. Of, uh, just town. looking at this building, and of course, I don't know if it's been, re I mean, I'm sure it's been redone. But generally, the buildings might have a store in the lower level, and then the Lady, people lived uh, lived above it. And this this was a uh, typical pattern. Pattern. Um, so, but that house still stands. And uh, the then he, then that's interesting to me that the cemetery stands. And here's why I'm interested. The, weren't you just astounded when Zimmer told us that they had a, a, a practice Kristallnacht in this town? The yes, night that, before Kristallnacht in Germany, they had that, this one in this town. But they didn't destroy the cemetery. Well, they, they did in surrounding towns. But they, all they did was after, after this one family to begin with, and they, they, they bashed the windows and, and ransacked the house, and, and the, the, the inhabitants did get away. Uh, and then they seemed to forget about it and not pay any attention to it. And I think he said that that was one of the last Jews that had been left. Yeah, most of most the Jews that had left had, all, had, had sold their left. holdings at very reduced well, that, prices yeah, that, that was, we know about. Um, but they this, didn't destroy the cemetery, which was no. interesting. Uh, ag again, they wanted a memorial to a disappeared people, I think. Uh, the cemetery was laid out that it started on the left side, and you can see that the, the left side is pretty well, has tombstones, and then they work uh, on the right side. And you can see one m sort of modern stone in the middle there. And that one essentially is a, a memorial stone, a memorial to our sisters and brothers who were killed during the w years 1933 to 1945 
May the memories of them continue forever. Do you know who is, does it say who put up that stone? No, but he said that the town itself, they, they, they gathered there and they cleaned it up every year and made sure that it's, it, it stayed clean. It certainly did look like it had been mowed and taken mm -hmm. care of. Right. Uh, so it was in, in a fairly good... Uh, and, uh, and then, and then this, the, your, the comment that Bob Arrelson was never bombed except for one volley when the Allies were afraid to enter because it was an SS I thought John, that was so funny. And, and it, the post office was hit. And, and it turned out that that post office was later on the, the location that uh, connected the east and west... The, red, the, the phone red phone the, connection. The, the, to Moscow had to go through Bob Arrelson. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, uh, it, and they, it, it, yes, and they used to have the, the, the shopping center where you and I went right. one day to the grocery store. That, that was the... The uh, SS Barracks. The SS Barracks, it was a big open area, and the, he, they said the barracks was around. And he, um, he told a very interesting story about the uh, foreign slave laborers. Do you want to tell that, or do you want me to... Oh, you tell it. Okay, well, there were, there were foreign slave laborers, laborers there. They had 100 to, to service the 1,000 soldiers. Uh, now that's one to ten, and you, had, you know you figure they had to feed them, they had to clean their clothes, they had to shine their shoes, they had to do everything. And if you did anything wrong, then they, the slave laborers were sent to a concentration camp where they were shot, were, where they were immediately killed. Um, so at some point or other, one or one or the other had stolen food. They were caught, and then they were, these three people were going to be sent away the next day. And one nice officer said to him get out of here tonight. And they said, how can we? We've got, you know, these black and white unit, uh, striped things. He said, well, you've got to be shot tomorrow anyway. You might as well go. So somehow they, one of them had access to the cars, uh, sort of set up a car. Uh, the others had access to the uniforms. Uniforms. Two of them got into a uniform. The third one was Still placed in, in the car. And, and they, they were started. And their heads were shaven. And they used so black to, pre to look as if they had hair. And, 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 and the officers with their hats on were yelling at the one with, with, with that still had the uniform, un, the Nazi, the uh, in, Prisoner. inmate. Prisoner. Uh, and so nobody paid any attention and off they rode. And somehow uh, Dieter was able to trace him to, I think they were Belgium. all from Den Belgium, okay, I was thinking Denmark, Belgium, and had the man come as a guest, and he went, and he showed him this was here, and this was here, and this was here. And well, it, we had a little mini-adventure when we were in this, in this plaza. We were wearing, oh, one of the things... We, we've got to get to that, yes, that was fantastic. One, uh, it was Israel Independence Day when we were in, in Bad Arrelson, and uh, we felt, as a group, it would be fitting to mark that, so we bought some pins of, with an Israeli flag, and we were wearing mm -hmm. them, and we were walking into the supermarket when this man, the stranger, stopped and said, excuse me for talking to you in public, in perfectly good English, are you from Israel? <laughs> no, but he said, but I see you're doing mm -hmm. something with ITS, because we, we had also our, had the ITS. And then he went on to tell us that he was an archivist at the Bundesarchiv in Berlin, that his mother had been the first um, personnel director of ITS, his father had worked there, he'd worked there for a year. And maybe she would like to tell us about the early years, but then it turned out this 80, yes, very yes. tall man. Yes, very this tall man. The 89 year old woman was overwhelmed at the idea, so he took us out for coffee and cake. Oh, that was it, very nice. It was so nice, and it's very, very unusual for a man to, 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 to stop two women and he kept speak to them. apologizing for he his kept, bad manners. We said and, it was fine. And, and we were delighted to talk to him, and he was really happy to talk to us. And Actually, he said, he was kind of cynical about yeah. Bad Arrows. Oh, yeah. yeah. He said... Well, because he, his mother married a Pole. Pole. So he has this Polish name in this very, very German town, so he didn't have it all that easy growing up either. Right. And both his mother and father did work at the ITS. Right. Um, and... And he, he was the one that told us about the, the directors over the years saying, don't work too hard, you'll, you'll work your way out of a job, uh, and, and, and things like that, and how very different the atmosphere was now. Right, at ITS. But he said there's, there's this undercurrent. He, he says it, um, they're still struggling with their Nazi past. They yeah, haven't yeah. Quite, quite faced it up. But then we went to a couple of other places, and, and you're going to talk of the next mm -hmm. one. You're going to pronounce that properly. Good. That's one of the things I learned this week, uh, this past week. The V is an F. 
The I mean, sound in most of the V words in German are, are pronounced with an F. Yeah, well, this is... I so would Volkswagen is the, Volkswagen. Huh? Volkswagen, yeah. yeah okay. So, okay, so we went to food. Yeah, and it was the first house that we saw where the bus parked, and the ITS um, paid for this bus to get us over oh, there. Oh, yeah. They, they paid for our lunches. They paid for this bus. They were... They, they, they bent over backwards. They, they really did. They, right. They were just incredible. They, and we all saw this Hebrew inscription and some German inscription, but nobody could figure out what it was. But that wasn't... And we thought that was a building we were supposed to go to, and it turned out, no, we were going to but see a synagogue. Then, then, then they told us that it had been painted over so many times that nobody anymore knew what it was, but it probably had been some Hebrew of, of some kind at one time or another. Uh, now, we went here to see the... Um, Restored Jewish synagogue. synagogue. And you said you knew the name of this uh, person? Right. If you oh. reach that piece of paper, I'll tell you about him. He's Carl Heinz Stadler, and he's president of an organization he founded, a full foundation, whose purpose it is to keep alive and more memorialize, memorialize, Me memorialize. I can't yeah. get the word out, the Jewish population of the region. The thing mm -hmm. to say about this corner of northeast, northwestern Hesse is that it's essentially agricultural, quite beautiful, those rolling hills oh, and that, that, that crop, that bright yellow crop, this color yellow that they make canola oil out of. Rapeseed oil. It was yes. rape, rapeseed. Right. And He's been tracing, and Jews have been in this, unlike we always think Jews lived in big cities. Well, there were Jews in this rural region, all over the region, Every from the town. beginning, from oh. 1100 on. And so he's the head of this uh, foundation. He's a high school teacher. He's also a member of the parliament for Hesse. So he's been, he has this group, and the minister of the church was there, too, with us. And he told us all about the, the history and the background of the yeah, There's the a little sign here that says the synagogue of, of the... And you know, they, they, it's not entirely restored inside, but they do have some. Uh, right, they, and he they, does weekend walking tours of the area. He's done archival research on all the inhabitants, uh, Jewish inhabitants. I wish he told us a little bit more about that. Uh, well, I, uh, he told us about the Rothschilds yeah. and how they, they had 11 sons and gave them X number. Oh, I, did, I didn't hear him tell well, that. I yeah, know that. They got $3,000 every time, uh, 3,000 marks when they married, and they gave the town 18,000 marks to build the church. Oh. I didn't realize that. Right. Uh, I don't know where I was when I... Um, th this is from the upper gallery, which would have been the women's gallery down there. In the bottom on the floor, you see a little... It's, uh, it's under glass and protected, and it, uh, it's a little piece of the original ceiling, so you can see what it looked like. And I just saw that the 6th and I Street Church has the same decoration. The Isn't ceiling that interesting? Decoration. Interesting. Um, I, then, then around this uh, plaque on the floor was inscriptions, and I don't remember what all those words were. I don't know if you do. Sadaka was but, one was, of them, and, was, and, 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 and just... Um, Sadaka means... Uh, charity. Charity, and strength, and, and worth, and, and, and... I don't remember the rest uh, of it. Uh, Interestingly, but, over the door was a, was a uh, art, uh, um, painting for the dukes of the region. Yes, it, well, just like we, you know, in our synagogue, we, you know, bless the... You know, mm -hmm. Hope our best for the United States. See this blue with the, mm -hmm. uh, gold the with the gold star, and there were little portions in the I Street Synagogue here in Washington that had that same design. Isn't that interesting? And Must have been traditional. Well, I don't, and I don't also know. the thing that we learned was that this the, the, they had a Jewish school, and the Jewish the, the teacher lived in this place too. Yes, he asked us about this, and we all sort of scratched our heads. They found this wooden hand. Mm -hmm. In the wall, and they didn't know what it was. What it was, and that looks like a hamsa, the good luck piece. Except that the slit in it looks as if it was used for coins for or something. Coins. So we all speculated that yeah. maybe it was the sadaka box. A sadaka is for charity box, and that might have been the top. And you, right. and you gave gave the money through that. The other the interesting thing is that they had several menorahs and stuff, and they were saying where each one was from. And he didn't mention one, and somebody said, "Well, where's that one from?" And he said, it appeared in a brown bag. That's right. I asked him where that was from. They had one of the original ones. Mm. Um, they also, the thing to say is that they exist solely on contributions. The, this, this group is yeah. doing this out of their own pocket, a lot of it. Okay, what's that? And then that? they took us out in the back, and there's Where this, they had that art, the sculpture. The sculpture of sort of somebody hanging there. Mm -hmm. um, and the interesting, you can see how close it is to the houses, and right almost... Like five feet to the right of where I was standing was this lovely geese. little brook. With the two squawking geese. To, yeah, and that, that belonged to the next property over. Um, and you could see they had a fence. I didn't take pic oh, I didn't have a picture here right. of the geese. But this was, you know, we were standing here looking at that uh, sculpture. And it was just there. Yes, and beautiful. they had that same kind of thing in, in the next town we went to as well. It's, it's just, uh, you know, peaceful and lovely and... Uh, 
And, and then on Friday afternoon, after our group had, had yeah. ended, you and I went and through the palace. We could have forgone that. That, yes. Lots of but portraits of old men. I, I was, <laughs> that was, that you can skip. Right. I, I don't have any other pictures of that. Uh, but uh, then as we got back to the hotel, all of a sudden, uh, Robert was there again. And he was bringing us some pictures that he had taken the day before. And we told him where we were going. He said, I'll drive you over there. And so we... And well, five miles away. Uh, another five, of our group was, was walking over. Yeah, and then somebody else, a couple others took, took a, a cab. cab. I guess there were ten of us all together that went to this place and where uh, another school teacher, Ernst Klein, has made this memorial. Museum. It's not a museum. It's really more like yeah. a memorial. And he's done amazing archival research. He has done genealogical research on all the Jews that ever lived there. Yes, Carol Baird wrote that. Uh, and and uh, he what, told us that. I, I was falling asleep. I'm That's right, tired. you did fall asleep. I was sitting here across. Uh, but uh, he also restored every tombstone. I mean, he all the tombstones were broken, but he knows the inscription on every single one. Yeah, of but them. yeah. Now I'll tell you why. We'll show. I'll show you why in just a minute. I don't know if you caught that. I did. Uh, this this says the uh, Jewish life in our region for the last thousand years. Um, and it's really a lot of posters and, and very old pictures of what the town looked like. The thousand and years is very important to notice, by that, the way, that, from that, 1100 on. That there were, there were Jews there. And this is him sitting there in the blue uh, right. uh, shirt. shirt. Uh, and there's Robert. He, came, yeah. he was going to go buy tires <laughs> after he dropped us off. Then he came around, came back, and said he, he wanted to hear this. I said, too. boy, that your errand was certainly short. And he says, this and is this more important. Or this is more interesting, interesting or something like that. Right. So, um, the, up in the upper right hand corner of that picture are some brown, what looks like brown papers. And this is what he used as, as to know what was in the cemetery because in the 30s somebody had, had drawn out a, a schematic. Few months of, before uh, Kristallnacht. They had drawn out of, uh, of the names and written down everything that was on all of the uh, tombstones. And, and that's he how tracked it down, yes. He and said the guy must have been prescient. It was two or three months before Kristallnacht where they destroyed the cemetery and where the Allies made the people of the town build a wall and a memorial after the war. Yes, but that memorial is sort of... Uh, yeah, they did it. They, they did this just the shows minimal. how the, the Año 916, that's, it, the, that's the year that this house, house was, was built. built. And uh, you find that very often in, in Europe. That yes, they we saw the, the castle on the hill and then the remnants of the medieval wall. Remember? Yeah, but very often when buildings were built, you'll they, see, put the, they, they put the, the year. That and also, some of those buildings, the carpenter who built the house and, wrote and something. We saw that on the on the synagogue. This, I think, was one of the Jewish houses. It right. looks like just any other house. Um, that was the house of one of our, the family of one of the people in our group. The last two that Jews. 11? The last two Jews. It was Carol Baird's family? No, it was Andrea Meyerhoff. Oh, okay. She, by the way, is, lives here in Washington. And her family came from Volkmarsen. Okay. And the last two Jews deported from Volkmarsen were distant cousins. Were cousins. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, no, that I didn't, was that I didn't house. Reala realize yeah. that. This was this the synagogue. And what struck me about this is, again, it's it's the green and white that the other one was. And I have no idea if that If it's that an was, accident. Yeah, if that was an accident of, in restoration or whether this was a common way of coloring. Um, so it's, it, it, that's stucco with wooden wood in between. Yeah, so, yeah, that's where all of the houses are. But in this case, the wood is painted green. And it was in the, in the other right. synagogue. Um, no, we didn't go inside this one. We just walked past it. There's people living there now. It's not certainly not a synagogue anymore. And I just took this picture because it's simply because it's a typical house that we saw there. So it's so gorgeous. The white stucco and... And, and, and the red wood. tile roofs. Yes. It, it's just, you know, it's so beautiful. And, and so... Is that was the so one clean. where they had the, the Protestant church? This was an interesting town to me because uh, Klein said to us that the majority of the people in the town are Catholic. And I said to him, but this is Hesse, not Bavaria. And he said, aha. He said, you know, they were always fighting. The Duke and this and that were fighting. And then they'd get a hunk of land that wasn't adjacent to the rest yeah. of there. So this was owned by some Duke from Bavaria. Somewhere. And so the, the largest population was Catholic. And then 20% of this town was Jewish. The Protestants were less than 20% and didn't have a church originally. And the, this Jewish man, it might have been that house, I allowed them to use a portion of his house as a as church. A, as and that's why I said to you, I, this to me was the walking through those two little dwarfs. I found quite um, moving and, and, and horrible at the same time in that 
you can see there was no such thing as a Jewish neighborhood. People lived side by side, totally integrated. It was unthinkable to them that their neighbors would turn on them. And then that's why so many Germans felt this too shall pass. This was German some, Jews. The German Jews, yes. It was this was some, you know, nut out there, you know, a couple of years and it'll be over with. And that's why they didn't all run right away. I mean, the ones that had a lot of sense did, but... Uh, or because they couldn't get jobs or they'd been fired and they yeah, left for economic well, that, reasons. That, uh, that, that happened late, uh, you know, right. as it progressed. I, I'm not really not sure if that was the house or not. It I was thought on he, a corner, so I thought he, he pointed... For, it could well be. It, I, I just took the, this picture because it was just so typical. And this is the cemetery that we eventually went to. And he said everything was really destroyed. Uh, this and is he, sort of, he and his group built that wall. Yes. And they're putting, you can't see it from this distance, they're putting metal plaques up for each of the people who were buried there. Yeah. And they've done the, re, you know. And this, know. this was the one stone that was left from 1845. From an older cemetery. From an older cemetery that was closed in 1845. And it says this particular stone was moved there in uh, 1999. And this is the back of it. It's the outside of the fence. And this is then the inside of the uh, cemetery. And we, it, we tried to read what it, year that was. And one of the Israelis in the group read it, but it was a Hebrew calendar. We didn't know what 5,000 X, you know, what it yeah. was in, in, and it, it's, in the it's, secular. There's so much missing of it. Right, it's but really the date, hard. he could get the date. But we, it, we, it, you it's many it. hundreds of years old. Uh, and this was the, uh, <laughs> the, the what there was erected. Do you right. want to talk about that? Well, that monument is made out of pieces of broken tombstones. Yes. So you can see Hebrew writing all around it. It's little pieces of broken. The this L is the back. Uh, the okay. L.I. occupation forces made the townspeople build that and build that little wall. But as, as Mr. Klein pointed out, they did it way in the back. They did it way in the back. And what they said is this, this is a remembrance of the people. Of, of the people or something like that. I can't remember the wording offhand, but they didn't mention it was a Holocaust or any of the people that were killed or, 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 or any of that. So uh, uh, Mr. Klein is, is certainly, he is, is, is sort of connected with the other group yes, he too. Is. They're, they're all sort of connected in, in, in these little towns to, to, to uh, try to make the remembrance of what. Right, you know, and, and it, the, the to topic that came up over and over again with these people when we, um, went through it was how did this happen? How could this yeah. have happened? And I think it was Klein who said something about when good people, men are silent, when good people are silent. And you know, there was a lot of discussion of that yeah. kind of thing. For me, just the psychologist that I am, it just reminds me what I've always thought, which is that the veneer of civilization is very right. thin yeah. and that underneath we can be quite uh, m much like animals. Well, there's, there's this story of they came for the, this group. And that wasn't me, so I didn't pay for attention. They came for the Poles, and it wasn't me, so I didn't pay attention. They came for the Italians, and, and suddenly they came for me, and there was no one left. Yeah. So, I mean, this is what this is. Now, there's, it was, this was, I mean, we've, you and I have gone to the Holocaust Museum. We've, we know a lot about this. But this was close up and personal, you know, and it really quite immediate. Yes, even though I didn't come from any of and these towns certainly personally. Certainly I didn't either. I was very, very moved by it, by the fact that, I know I don't know whether these men, these people that are doing it, are the are the guilt, are bearing the guilt of their uh, ancestors or what their ancestors or parents did, and we, we didn't ask. I mean, the uh, only one that mentioned it was was Dieter, the man who took us uh, around. Was, was the only one that mentioned and, and specifically said that he knew his father had been a, uh, a Nazi. Um, but certainly now the we were. should add. I'm told that in Germany now it's, they teach a mandatory class on the Holocaust to high school students. They, for many yeah. years, people didn't hear about it, but um, that it's... Yeah, when but, I, and, and who was it that pointed out that you can ask American children about the Holocaust? They don't know. No, they don't know either. They don't know at all, but the German children mm -hmm. now do. When, when, when the first time I went to Germany, I was on a college tour, and it was run in conjunction with the University of Berlin, and I was talking to the young men there, and they said they had not heard of it until they were in college. Again, it was too close, perhaps. They, nobody wanted to know about it. You shove it underneath the rug and... and and, and you don't hear about it. So I can understand those first people not being taught about it. And I'm glad that they're doing it now and because there are those skinheads that, uh, that scare the heck out of them. Right. So that's what Robert said. There is also a, a quite reactionary political group in Germany. But the people we met were unfailingly lovely to us. Absolutely. They stopped people on the street. <laughs> One of our group, uh, Renee Steinig, was walking down that, that Disneyland-like street. Mm -hmm. and, and 
she didn't have her. The, the it was Senate. after Israel Independence. Somebody stopped her and said, "Oh, you're with that group at ITS. <laughs> I saw your picture in the paper. Oh. We were on the front page of four newspapers. They held a press conference for us." Yeah. And uh, oh, this this is this is the just some of the broken pieces. That's really all you see in the there cemetery. There are only two tombstones left in that cemetery mm -hmm. that could that were whole. And that's, that's, were, that's in front of the of the Jewish. School? That's what th this was the, s the lower part was the school and the upper part that was had his little That's also where the ghetto was. They forced oh. all the Jews of Old Marson to move into that school Jewish school. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yes. And then they the thing that was so strange, they didn't take them all at one time. They took them bits and pieces yeah, to you de never for knew deportation. When you were, you never so they knew left when two behind and then they came back and got those two. Yeah, so you you don't understand any um, rationale or, or any of yeah, this. Uh, it uh, was quite you know, and we talked a lot, or I did anyhow, to the director of ITS and the deputy director and said, what do you envision for the future for the International Tracing Service? Because I must tell you that I personally believe that it must go on the Internet, that the documents Eventually, must. Eventually, yes. And what will happen there, they, they talk about this wanting to be a research institute mm -hmm. because there's always value in touching the papers themselves. Yeah. And sometimes you can't see... I couldn't, uh, there was one name that I couldn't read until I had the actual document. Yeah. And then I could well, see I the did, name. Yeah, and another thing, when I got my, uh, since I said I didn't need to have the paper document, if they weren't going to give you the original, a Xerox of it anyway, a uh, uh, photocopy of it. Uh, I said, I'll just take them on, on the digitized version. There was one that, there was a slight mistake on it, said it was for two people, and when I looked through it, oh, you know, the other one was would have been up the that's list a little bit the, further. That's the other so thing. it was important. To uh, for the researcher to, to look through all the stuff. The other they thing I want to say, though, is it's important you know this. We were all taught not to believe everything we read, and there are there are er there are state there are errors in those documents. There are there are things in those documents that aren't true. I found some where they probably deliberately lied about their ages and about oh, yeah. other things, and so you can't you have to. You have to work the documents to just, really get just a sense. Just like of anything else you do in genealogy, you, right. you don't Not believe one, 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 one single piece. document. Uh, but as much as possible, the Nazis were awfully, uh, the Germans in general are so awfully meticulous. meticulous. I mean, yeah. who would build a town where you had three ha windows, it's five windows, window three windows, five windows? I mean, it, 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 the sense of orderliness is, yeah. is quite remarkable. Well, I think we're, we're just about out of time, so I think we better stop chatting. <laughs>